Hi friends, in this video lecture we will go through a concept called von Mises stress and we will see how this concept can be useful for engineers for their development projects. Well, to begin with, von Mises stress is considered to be a safe haven for design engineers. This is a safe haven for design engineers because of this reason. Look at these diagrams. These are simulation results of some mechanical or structural design components. If the engineer who is in charge of design of these components will determine whether this component will be able to withstand a given load by checking a stress called von Mises stress. That means here we can see von Mises stress induced in these materials and the engineer can say if maximum value of von Mises stress induced in this material is greater than the strength of the material then the design fails. And this assumption works well for most of the cases, especially when material is ductile in nature. So von Mises stress is an important design criterion. But what exactly is a von Mises stress? What does it signify? We will get a logical answer to this question in coming sessions. So let's get into it. And from here onwards we are going to analyze von Mises stress conceptually. So let's start. In practice you find out maximum strength of a material from a test called simple tensional test where you pull the material from both the ends and from this experiment you can find out what's the maximum stress it can withstand or strength of the material and for ductile material the maximum strength of material is taken as yield point of the material because after yield point permanent deformation of the material happens and for brittle material you can take it as ultimate tensile stress now consider this case a real engineering problem of same material under a complex loading condition so you know, for a simple tension case which was uniaxial, if the failure happens at yield stress. So can I say here also the failure will happen at yield stress at any point? Means you can find out maximum value of normal stress at any point using stress analysis. And can I say if maximum normal stress at, at any point is greater than yield stress, my material will fail? Well that's a logical intuition, you can do so. And if you do so, you are using a failure theory called maximum normal stress theory. And many decades of engineering experience have shown that this theory doesn't work for most of the cases. It will lead to a pretty bad design. And what is widely accepted in industry is a theory called distortion energy theory. So few words about distortion energy theory. Consider this simple cube. When stress is acting on this cube, there can be two components of deformation for this material. Either it can undergo a volumetric deformation like this or it can undergo a shape deformation like this. It is also known as angular distortion or shear distortion. And in volumetric distortion you see there is no shape change for the material but volume changes. And here in shape deformation or angular distortion only the shape changes, volume remains same. And according to distortion energy theory the culprit behind failure is distortion means shape change. This is mainly because intermolecular slip in material. And as the name suggests this theory is related to energy, energy of distortion. And you know if you want to deform this material from this shape to this shape you should supply some energy to it. And that energy is known as distortion energy. So we have two cases of distortion energy. First is distortion energy in a simple tension test at the time of failure. And second is distortion energy in an actual system. For this case, this energy is per unit volume, so that volume of material doesn't come in picture. And we'll denote these energies using this notation. And according to distortion energy theory, we'll compare these two energies. And it says that when distortion energy per unit volume in actual case is more than the distortion energy in simple tension test, the material fails. So this is a the theory. So let's have more analysis on this condition. So the first thing you need an expression for distortion energy. This is the equation for that where sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 represent principal stresses inside the material and principal stresses represent maximum or minimum normal stress inside the material at a given point. And you can deduce values for these stresses using stress analysis. Now this is distortion energy for an actual system for a three dimensional case. So what's the second term? Distortion energy for a simple tension test. There you can put sigma 2 and sigma 3 as 0 and you can put sigma 1 as yield stress assume it is a ductile material 
Then it will be simplified like this. Distortion energy in a simple tension test at the time of failure. And if you can compare these two quantities, that's a condition. So this is a condition for failure according to distortion energy theory. It says that when this quantity inside my actual body is greater than yield stress of material, my design fails. We will forget all other things and we will concentrate our study on this. Now what I do, I will call this quantity as von Mises stress, the famous von Mises stress. And this theory is also known as von Mises theory of failure. So the equation can be simplified like this. When von Mises stress induced in the material is greater than yields on the simple tension test, the material fails. So task of engineer is easy now. He can just find out maximum value of von Mises stress inside the material and he can compare whether it is exceeding yields on the material. If it exceeds, then material fails. Of course, he can put some factor of safety in between if he wants a safe design. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you got a good insight on von Mises stress.